Hi, Felix. Thanks so much for joining me. Hi, good to see you. Really excited to do this. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I saw a tweet of yours earlier saying that now everyone can have a passkey login like Google uh, using Hanko. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. I just wanted to get the word out uh, and make it clear. I mean, that's why we do it. That's why we do what we do. Yes, sir. And uh, I think people are uh, noticing already and uh, this will be widely, widely used. So I'm super excited to, you know, start with hearing a little more about your background and then how Hanko got started. Yes. So in my in my previous life, um, <laughs> and thank you for asking, by the way, in my previous life, I was, um, I founded a software agency, basically. So we, we built software for money uh, for very uh, different clients. And um, uh, a recurring theme among all most of these projects was authentication and struggle with passwords. And uh, basically, we had to build everything from from scratch every time. And um, uh, a few years in, I decided, okay, maybe it's time to build a product. I'm, I consider myself a, a product guy and uh, I like working on things, making things better. Um, and uh, ideally scale those things uh, afterwards. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought about um, what, what can be done, what is a good product and uh, what is the struggle I personally have. And uh, this, this issue with, uh, with building authentication over and over again, paired with my, my own inability to do passwords, right? Uh, right, I had, I had one or two passwords I used for all, the logins that I have uh, that I had, and I, I knew it wasn't right, but I didn't know what to do better, and um, so I thought, okay, maybe maybe that is an issue I, I should I should tackle, and that's that's the background. That's how Hanko came to be. I love it. I love it. Uh, it's it's a golden recipe to scratch your own itch. Have heard this again and again, and you can go wrong with this, and it's a problem everyone is facing. Uh, building yeah. Business on the internet. Uh, so what did it look like, you know, early on, letting people know about this new project, maybe having some uh, first contributors come in? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I told you this before. Um, we started we started as a proprietary solution, focusing on, uh, on FIDO, web and pass keys. Uh, they weren't called pass keys back in the day, a few years ago already. Um, and um, we just thought, okay, when this when this um, opportunity comes that uh, you don't have to use a password anymore on the internet, you can use your devices and what your devices are capable of: Touch ID, Face ID, Windows Hello, all those uh, shiny shiny things. Uh, and there is a day where you can all use all this uh, on websites and on apps uh, without the user having to do anything, having to install anything. Um, when this day comes, everyone is going to need it. That was our, that was how we started this. And the thing is, uh, with this kind of complex technology and ecosystem and infrastructure, every browser has to support it. Every operating system has, it, has to support it. And they all have to uh, work together, basically. It's, it, right? you, you have to be able to use a passkey that is stored on your Android phone with your Windows machine, for example. So. This took took a while until it was ready, really ready. Um, we had some milestones uh, on the way that looked like now is the time. You could use Windows Hello on a website. It was pretty fancy, but it was only on this one device. So things got, uh, it was not as fast as we imagined. And um, so, um, yeah, we started as a proprietary solution for financial institutions and telcos everywhere, maybe where a bit more security is relevant. And we wanted to bring this technology uh, to those companies. And um, the thing is, we were too early with that, I guess. Uh, and uh, so we we uh, we figured, what, what can we do today? So what can we do today? And um, we still wanted to, uh, wanted to follow our initial uh, like idea, so moving away from passwords, helping developers and product people to to build something that is not dependent on to, to build a login to be specific that is not dependent on passwords, uh, while at the same time 
uh, build something that is valuable today and not in a in a whatever distant future where pass keys can be used everywhere. That future is now, but it, <laughs> in the past it it, it wasn't. Um, yeah, so we decided, okay, what can we do? And uh, we knew we had some time left until the pass keys uh, are there. And we figured, okay, what is a what is a known uh, what is a known solution uh, to the authentication problem? And it is it is an authentication solution that really um, covers everything from account creation, from uh, account recovery, from the user profile. Uh, and it should include UI components, so uh, it's not only it cannot only be an API solution. And so, with that, with all that experience, we uh, we made the, in the years before, uh, focusing on on password lists too early in the market, and building many demo systems, working with many clients, did some pilots with uh, very big companies, uh, by the way. But yeah, it was like a nice proof of concept. There were always the buts, and so we, we, we dropped everything. To long story short, we dropped everything we, we've done so far, aside from this really this FIDO core that we did. Uh, FIDO is the protocol behind all this. We don't have to go into the details. I just if I drop this word, that's the reason why uh, it's it's a it's a protocol that, that powers all this passwordless stuff. So we 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 kept the core, uh, our uncle core, and we built. Uh, we built a full authentication solution on top of it, and that is what you what you can see on GitHub today. Uh, we started with that a bit more than a year ago. Uh, again, with the first line of code on GitHub, uh, building this building this uh, vision of ours uh, that makes sense today and that will make sense in the future. And um, this is how this is the story of Funko basically. And um, I mean, right now we just launched the public beta of our cloud solution uh, to make integration and uh, building stuff with Hanko even simpler. Um, that's the idea behind it. You can get your your working uh, your working Hanko instance uh, with just a few clicks, and we take care of everything, and you pay us a bit for it. Uh, there's a free the free instance, of course, as well. Um, yeah, targeting developers all over the world. Uh, the U.S. ecosystem becomes more and more important, as we can see from the traffic to our website. Uh, pass keys is a is a big topic over there, and recent annou announcements like the one uh, Google made just a few days ago, uh, it helps us, of course. Yeah. Wow! Thank you so much for sharing this background information. I love it. I love it. And and it sounds like you spent years, sort of like uh, you know, knitting your sales, putting them up until the. Uh, you know, the wind of lack and opportunity hits, which sounds like, and the decision to go open source, I think, has vindicated you. Uh, so now fast forward to, to today, um, the work that you have on your plate, uh, your team, how's that gonna uh, change and what's on the roadmap? Maybe a milestone you might like to share. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, like I was saying, we are now building an authentication solution basically around one feature of such an authentication solution. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff where we that is solved that is not rocket science things like uh, OAuth integrations for sign in with Google and sign in with Apple we just did that uh, next on the roadmap is things like SAML for B2B use cases where customers of ours have business customers themselves and they want to use their uh, their directory services or whatever they Okta and so those customers can use us as well. Uh, this is a pretty, uh, pretty important uh, step we have to make. So, so far, we only cater to B2C companies, more or less, or very simple use cases. And for that, to, to extend this basically in the B2B space, we have to do some. Uh, um, again, the Pasty ecosystem is, is, is ready now. I just a few days ago, I, I published um, a new infographic to Paskis.io that's like the demo and, and educational page that we run. Uh, showcasing where where pass keys work and where where there are still uh, some missing pieces and um, we of course always focus on those missing pieces as well to um, to basically guarantee uh, an, an ideal uh, user experience everywhere so we don't want our user the users of our customers 
uh, to run into issues because there's some fancy technology, but those users can use it. This is not a good idea. So we have to make sure it works everywhere for everyone. And uh, this is something we always spend a good amount of time on doing. Uh, and uh, from our experience, we also learned that this is like the this is like the biggest problem to solve with those new authentication technologies. It is not the the stuff that has to happen in the back end, the crypto stuff. It is not simple, sure, but it is not something you couldn't do if you're smart and you know how to build software. You can do it, uh, but the the flows, the user flows, and all the handling of what the user wants and what what happens. This is the complex stuff, and this is like our um, our area of expertise, I would say, and also where we focus on. Um, what else? We're building right now. We're building um, mobile SDKs for iOS and Android and Flutter and React Native um, because pass keys really shine cross platform and cross uh, cross device. Uh, you can create your account in an, in an iPhone app, for example, with a pass key and sign into the same provider to the same app, basically on your Mac, for example, just with Touch ID. And that's, that's really cool. Uh, you don't have to do anything uh, to sign in uh, to your account on another device. And so we, we've, from very early on, we knew we wanted to uh, extend our offering and also our documentation and our SDKs uh, to the mobile world, world as well. Um, yeah, because it just makes so much sense. But a mobile developer probably won't touch our stuff without an SDK. So there's a way to do it with the API, but they want an SDK, so we are building it. Uh, this is like one of the big, big next releases. That's, that sounds super uh, logical as the next steps, and that sounds perfect actually for the for the DX to support. And uh, yeah. you know, with, with all this work to be done, I'm curious to ask uh, at this point if and how you're thinking about like um, potentially hiring, like funding, and then the commercial aspect of it, which yeah. love to touch about the monetization. All these things relate. So, what's your approach as a founder here? Are you thinking about so? It? I mean, hiring, we are, we are careful right now. Um, so we, we have some funds. Uh, we, we just closed a funding round with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a very, very cool partner here in Germany. Uh, this is a software, software company themselves. Uh, the big announcement will be on Monday, so I can't tell you who it is right now. <laughs> but it, it is pretty cool. And uh, they, they have a very good market access in Europe. Uh, and they are especially in the enterprise uh, in the enterprise world, so we can we can leverage uh, that. Um, that's the plan. And um, but still, we are very careful. So in the past, um, we we raised some funds uh, while we were proprietary uh, already. Um, and back in the day, this was very big money for us. And we thought, okay, we are a startup. Now we have to start up and hire many folks and do many things. And uh, not everything we did was so good, and the money was gone uh, faster than you could than you could count it, basically. And uh, that was that was really a learning for me uh, to be to be very careful with with um, where you spend the money. It is um, we're not bootstrapped, right? It's, I don't think it's possible with what we do. So we you have to build a lot of product and you have a lot of yeah, you, you said it. DX is DX is not simple. It's very it's 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 much effort to have a good DX and UX, and um, someone has to has to pay for it basically. And um, the longer this the longer this um, this money uh, is there, the better. So we are hiring, but very carefully, uh, especially um, uh, especially de developer relations. That's what we want to do. So. We, we do it uh, we do it ourselves right now but I think someone um, focusing on this community and on uh, on the on the task to look at the product look at the audience look at the frameworks and really find the perfect match find what's missing on the product side find what what we may not see uh, say in the next js world or whatever um, we don't see everything and this, this person hopefully uh, can can sit in all in between like our audience and 
uh, and our product and focus on uh, making making us better for this uh, and so this is like the most critical role we want to we want to hire right now that's perfect and you, you give an excellent description of what the devrel uh, devrel you know business function is and uh, yeah. it serves that's amazing uh, very, very quick follow up on on the previous note that sounded like a word of caution uh, for other founders when it comes to fundraising was it that it was too early was it that the pool was not enough or there was clarity missing uh, yeah yeah this is, i think it's a classic example of scaling a pre product market fit we were we were doing fancy stuff it was cool we had some big meetings with uh with very big names and with large financial institutions and so on but not real business so it was it was in the uh in the pilot phase and then they were evaluating stuff and uh, it looked very promising but in the end in, in hindsight far too early to like hire expensive sales folks from Uh, companies uh, like US based companies uh, very high salary level uh, as well and we we just tried we just tried it and thought okay now is the time and uh, hired external marketing agencies to write some content for us so when i when i say this now i i, I almost smile about it i mean it's it's funny in hindsight but it was it was very serious when we did it and We, we wanted to do our best and we thought this is it and so uh, when we decided to uh, to pivot to open source and this, um, this like go to market strategy is uh, definitely a reason for that i mean we, we, we are building authentication and for that you need trust I mean, this is like the the one thing you you need to trust is the authentication stack probably uh, maybe your database and um uh, so you need the maximum amount of trust and we thought okay how can you, how can we convey that uh, the best in the best way and the answer was clear it has to be open source or at least open core um to to guarantee this longevity that comes along with it so if if we for some reason don't exist in a year uh folks that decided to go with us can still continue using it forever um and so you can take a look under the hood of course all these all these uh, reasons why open source is great uh, they they apply to us of course but for us it was also like a go to market strategy because we have to reach developers and what's better than being open source for that and um, that is like the that's like the story behind it since we decided to do it um we are we all are in agreement that it was it was the best decision we ever made because building software openly and on github and with um, with an active community and with feedback from the community that is very friendly and that is not uh, uh, i don't know it's, it, the, it it completely changes uh, at the moment where you where you are, say you are open source here's the code you can do whatever you want with it uh, then of everyone's friendly to you and this is this is so cool uh, and we we would never go back i say never I, i can't i can't imagine going back and building proprietary software i don't know what happens in the future but yeah it makes so much more sense absolutely wow uh, thanks so much for highlighting all this for 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 the word of caution earlier about you know funding yeah. it's, a, it's a tuition a lot of founders pay to learn uh, and yeah. then exactly as you said i mean the decision to open source and there's all these different superpowers trust is one of them and then the go to market distribution aspect and uh, i would like to ask a question here about distribution for an open source developer tool and you know a lot of other open source companies are building dev tools super important mm -hmm. so you already mentioned you're hiring for a developer relations role which is going to help with that um and you're targeting you're speaking with enterprises like bigger teams bigger companies with a budget so Um, if there's maybe any lesson learned so far, something from your experience, some advice for other founders, what to do or not to do here, how much outbound to do or just rely on inbound, and then how you as a founder manage all this, right? Because you got to write code too and speak with all these people. It's hard. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's <laughs> you're juggling, you're juggling with your time all the time. Um, 
it's hard. And with open source, specifically with commercial open source, in the end, you have, you have at least two products, right? You have the open source product with the open source community, and then you have your commercial product. Things change a little, right? You uh, you ask for money, you get money, uh, and there's some, um, I don't know, uh, as soon as you get money, right? People expect something from you, and this, uh, this happens. So... Um, you need to you need to take this into uh, into consideration when you decide to go commercial open source, um, and then when you start talking to enterprises and bigger clients, um, it becomes really interesting because the whole thing changes again. Uh, there are very long sales cycles, um, very diff different requirements. Uh, things like, uh, for example, GDPR is is very important. Uh, SLAs become very important. All those things uh, that you wouldn't have to care, not so much, at least uh, for smaller, for startup companies, for example, that you that you uh, provide these services to. So, and you have to um, also you have to make sure not to not to do too much, uh, not to do too many things at the same time, because then you couldn't do any of those in a good way. So for us, it was also clear that we start with focusing really on this, on the the indie dev, so to speak, or small startups that just want, they just need a login, and we provide a very cool solution for it, and that's it. So make this very simple, very clear, very fast, and um, not. We we didn't talk to any big corporation for one and a half years, not a word, because we knew. It, it it doesn't make sense for what we do now. Now, as we we've built this foundation, we start to we start to talk to bigger companies again because we have this foundation. We know it works for developers, uh, and it also in this in this big uh, corporations, they are developers and they play a, a more and more a role in the decision making process of those uh, of the buying process there, and. Um, yeah, we, we know it's a good idea to uh, to have them on your side, but still you have uh, this uh, the sale happens usually not through the developers, uh, maybe through the CTO uh, or uh, maybe a chief a senior architect, probably not the developer. And so things change a little, but yeah, this is like, I think we're right at the moment where we focused on indie developers and startups and now try to uh, try to evolve our business model uh, to larger customers with the help of our investor luckily absolutely and 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 it sounds like even for those enterprises for those bigger teams that you can anticipate their needs uh still it would start with a single developer there experimenting with a product you know to yeah. test it before so you're saying why why build all those things that, that those teams will need like you know first thing you should leave them for when you actually have those uh, people experimenting yeah. too and and yeah. tied to the you know sort of like the business side of things you're having those conversations then working on development then and figuring out pricing as well uh yeah. at that point so that's very sensible would the same hold true for having cloud uh, version probably not it has to be in the early things and how did you approach the decision because some founders wonder whether the cloud version should come in early um, mm -hmm. yeah I mean, um, we heard when we were we met, when we were just open source and had the had the project on GitHub and had some quick start guide and the Docker containers and everything. Um, every day we got requests for this is too hard. How do I do it? Where's the YAML for my environment? Whatever, what should I do? And I here's uh, the course issue with my. So it <laughs> they struggled a lot with it. And you can't make it simpler. It is you have to you have to do it this way. There's no way around it. And uh, I mean, we knew we knew from the beginning we want to do cloud, but this was like every day one more reason or two more reasons at least to do it. And so, um, I mean, the the open source project is still in beta, and so we just usually initially our plan was to bring it to one 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 zero. And then launch cloud, and we decided to do it faster because uh, there was demand for it. And this is also this is also a, a, I think a very important learning that we had. Right now, we are doing 
I would say we're doing almost nothing uh, that has not been asked. So we, we really hear what folks are saying and we focus on that because, I mean, we think we know stuff, but uh, we've learned that it's not always true. So um, it is much better to, um, yeah, to cater to those that already see you and that have, um, that have questions and that have ideas and then, uh, yeah, bring this into our decision-making process of, of how to proceed. And yeah, that's become our golden rule. When there's no demand, someone really has to convince the team to do it. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's great advice here, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for sharing. And uh, now, like moving moving ahead, um, are you at, and at this stage, which is challenging, like are there any people in the ecosystem that you might have reached out to for advice or do you just kind of like figure it all on your own and being near the, the customer? Just curious if there's other people that... Uh... I don't know. So um, again, one benefit of the open source community, it is very friendly and um, you can you can reach out to many uh, folks that seem to be pretty busy, but for some reason they find time and help you a great deal. So um, for example, I mean, I know I know the founder of Cal.com pretty, pretty well. And uh, at the moment where we decided for uh, where we decided or where we discussed the the pivot to open source, uh, we had some we had some hour long uh, uh, discussions about this. And um, I would say it was a big influence and very helpful. And uh, for example, another another name I can drop is um, um, the founder of Greylock, for example, uh, took uh, took some time and helped me uh, with the decision making process. So uh, thank you, by the way, for for your time here. And uh, uh, yeah, that was great. So I just I just asked, and uh, they helped. Yeah. That's that's amazing, and couldn't stress that you know, more and I hear it again and again, like open source founders do yeah. give you time so much. And and we know how, you know, how busy Peer is and, and he acts almost like a design partner in a friendly way, like spends all that yeah. time with you, helps you. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for these shout outs. And, uh, you know, if, if someone would like to, you know, reach out to you uh, today and later on, I'm, I'm guessing your DMs are open too. <laughs> that is, that goes without saying, I think, yes, yes. <laughs> Phenomenal, phenomenal. So, you know, for, for, for a closing, wondering if you would like to, you know, maybe give again like a very short pitch and, you know, lead people to try out Hanko. Just to say the same. <laughs> Before I do that, I wanted to give a shout out to you because, I mean, we, we haven't done, done so much on your platform yet, but um, it looks very promising. So um, we, are, we will definitely uh, put put in more effort to... Uh, to create uh, good issues and put it on there, uh, I really, really like the idea, and, and we want to we want to work with you. Uh, and uh, very you. convincing what what you're building. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a privilege to partner, and uh, you know, as it's needed, and as there's uh, you know work to be done in your community, we would be very very happy to see increased activity. And you know, for us, it's like just just two of us. We are a bootstrap startup. Our, our kind of product and business lends itself to it and we're one developer, Zaf writes, uh, you know, all the code. So that can be done. It's very challenging, but at the end of the day, what energizes us is, you know, building for people like you uh, yeah. here and all these other founders. It's it's incredible. It's a great opportunity and amazing actually. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you so much for saying those kind words and, and thank you for this interview. Um, it's It's been a pleasure and let's, let's not do that nice closer. Uh, <laughs> thank you i mean i think i, I will close with with uh, what you've opened with so if if uh, if you ever want a, a login that is as cool as google and google pass keys that just shipped and it is a very good implementation of, of pass keys i have to say it's very cool everyone with a personal uh, google account can check it out right now um and we've been working on this stuff for really for almost seven years now so we know where it where it comes from and we know where it will go. And this is this is something we care about so much. We want to rid, get rid of passwords, uh, and we help we have every developer doing it. 
And um, so Hanko is, a, is an authentication solution that you could, can put in front of your, of your application. It is uh, the UI components are web components. So it works with, with any website, basically. You can just plug it in. There's no restrictions on the framework you use. And uh, backend is, is very uh, slim, uh, very slim Go application, uh, very, very small memory footprint. Uh, you can use Hanko Cloud, it spins up, there's a free tier. And really we have a, we have a video, we put out a video, uh, it is 10 minutes uh, for an integration with React, with the React app, from create React app to a working, to a working app that has a login with pass keys, a profile where users can manage their stuff. Uh, log out, of course, and then then comes the developer and builds whatever they want to. And uh, this is this is my pitch. I love it. And and the mobile SDKs are coming super soon too. Yes, so, sure. Uh, All right, <laughs> that's right. Phenomenal. Thank you so much. So everyone, go and check out Hanko. Phenomenal. Um, thank you so much, Felix. Really appreciate this. And uh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Bye bye.